come toppling down like a, like a game you would play with friends. We'll find out. <laughs> Welcome to Good Morning Football, presented by Mercedes-Benz Vans on this Thursday, January 3rd. My name's Kay, Nate Burleson, Kyle Brandt, Peter Schrager, and you guys out there watching at hashtag GMFB. Hit us up with whatever your thoughts are for Wild Card Weekend. It's just two nights away for marquee matchups this weekend. So let's take a look at what's going to go on. AFC side here, you know, the Patriots don't have to play. They're on the bye, so is KC. Then you've got Indy uh, going to Houston to face the Texans. The Chargers and Ravens go at it for the second time this season in Baltimore. Moving on to the NFC side of things here. We've got the Seahawks in Arlington to face the Cowboys. You've got... Uh, uh, then you've got, of course, the Eagles and the Bears in Soldier Field late. Late game on Sunday. Still can't decide, Shregs, if I can go to the game and get back here on time. I'll make an executive decision. If you want to do the show from Chicago on Monday, you're allowed to. Thank you. you. Saints and Rams. I wouldn't. I don't know. Uh, those two teams have a bye. Let's break it down. Crucial matchups of the weekend with something we call the, 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 the Rodown Thursday. Up first, the league's top rushing offense and the league's top rusher face off on Saturday. Who has the scarier ground game? Mm. This is impossible to answer. The Seahawks or the Cowboys, but I'll, I'll leave it to you guys. Yeah. You know who has the scarier ground game? For me, if you're looking at running back versus running backs, even though the Seahawks are the best rushing team in the postseason, what tips the scale is the fact that Ezekiel Elliott is the best running back in football. He led the league in rushing. But then what tips the scale back in the favor Talk of the, the Seattle Seahawks? It's the quarterback's chase. Yep. Squawk about it. Squawk about <laughs> it. <laughs> and that's the Seattle Seahawks quarterback, Russell Wilson. So Dak Prescott is athletic. I, I don't want to minimize and dismiss what he does yeah. when he leaves the pocket. But Russell Wilson is the magic mm -hmm. man. I mean, there's no one more entertaining once that pocket starts to break down or even him just extending it purely off of the simple fact that he might survey the field and say, my guys aren't open right now. I don't worry about it. I'll extend this play an extra six seconds and I'll get them open. So for me, I'm going to go with Russell Wilson in that running game, not the running game of the Seattle Seahawks purely by itself. How fitting would it be in the year of the quarterback and big offense Mm -hmm. and, and all the fireworks we saw, the 54-51 right. game between the Rams Talk and about the Chiefs, it. that if Ezekiel Elliott said, you know what, I'm the best running back in the game, let me be the one to lead us to a Super Bowl. Let me be the guy. And that the story of 2018 was Zeke Elliott taking the Cowboys on his back and running. He's the league's leading rusher. He went through all of that stuff last year, missed all those games. People were doubting him, said he looked heavy in the offseason, comes in, and what's he do? He's the best running back in football yet again. I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott as the guy who can get things done. And in this game, which I do not, I've said it time and time again this week, I don't think this game is 35-32. I think this game is 16-10. Wow. This game is 17-14. And I think it's Ezekiel Elliott getting 35 carries and doing what he was born to do on the big stage. I saw him do it, a national title game for Ohio State, and run all He's over still the running. field. Still He's running. still running from that game. Ezekiel Elliott, this is your day. I'm going with the Cowboys in their running game. Um, Zeke's sexier, bigger name. Can we talk about what Chris Carson has been doing? Not this season, not the last few weeks. Crazy. Buck 22. Oh. Buck 16. Oh. Buck 19. Oh. He is on. Get up, Chris. Um, he's incredible. He's one of the hottest running backs in football at the perfect time. He's angry. He's fast. He has Russell Wilson. And I'm still taking Ezekiel Elliott. I'm still going with <laughs> really? the Cowboys. Because let's not I'm kid ourselves. That. I know. I, I like to dick you guys. Um, let's not kid ourselves. Dak Prescott can still run, too. Ezekiel Elliott is the league's leading rusher. Fresh legs. Sat out last week. He had himself a nice personal buy. I think he's out of the shoot this You week. like the Dickus or Zekas? Both. Uh, Nate, I like it. Ezekiel Elliott. That's Chris me. Chris Carson's out. Rush Zeke the past four weeks. Momentum is a thing in this league. We'll see how it goes. Both teams are going to run the ball a lot in that game. Next up, Chargers and Ravens score off on Sunday. Imagine this scenario. Fourth and three, the game's on the line. Who do you trust more to get the first down? Is it Phillip mm. Rivers or Lamar Jackson? I have two phases of my relationship with Lamar Jackson. One was my entire life, that is since I've known the last few years, and the second one was after we had Tony Jefferson on the show. <laughs> Raven Safety, Tony Jefferson came on a few seconds ago and we asked him about Lamar, and he's just like, I'm so glad he's on my team. I am so thankful because he's Michael Vick. He has all these things he does in practice that we haven't even seen yet. So I love Phil. You'd sit back and just chuck his sidearm for the first down. I'm going to go Lamar because anything goes and the best is yet to come. The talent, the speed, on a third and four, I'll take him break in the pocket moving the chains. Fourth and three is an interesting one because on third and five last week with a small lead and everyone in Baltimore holding their breath, the Ravens called a bizarre 
option play to Ty Montgomery who bobbled the ball and it was a loss of yards. He punted it away and he gave Baker a shot. Fourth and three, I'm going with Phillip Rivers. Mm. Fourth and three, I'm going with Phillip Rivers to make the big play because I feel like that veteran quarterback is going to be able to get it done. Lamar Jackson, I still have not seen Nobody has. that fourth and three play yeah. where he says, okay, I'm going to use my arm, and if I don't have to, I can make it with my legs. Look, he's made a ton of great plays, but if I have to pick one guy in the biggest of spots right now based on the body of work, I haven't seen enough of Lamar in the big moment. Now, you know, Phil Rivers isn't exactly Nick Foles or Tom Brady in the big spot either, <laughs> but I do know that he's got the full confidence. And in Arrowhead, when he had to say, let's make a dirt, play in the dirt, let's get a two-point conversion, he had the, the wherewithal to throw this pass to Mike Williams in the back of the oh, end yeah. zone and knew to get it done. I'm going with Phil. Here's a fourth yeah. down to Travis Benjamin at Arrowhead Week 15, that same game. We've seen him do it. We've got one vote for Lamar, one for Phil. What say you, Nate? I had to figure out a way to kind of quantify this. And I, I reached out to Hamilton, you know, the bearded boy wonder, and yep. he said, all right, let's break this down, the fourth and short, and the fourth and medium, third and medium. And he said that the Chargers are ranked 17th, and the Baltimore Ravens are ranked fourth. And you're like, Nate, who cares about these numbers? I don't care either but when you peel back the onion even further on those fourth and medium plays third and medium plays the Baltimore Ravens 10 passes 22 runs the fact that they can keep you that off balance in a game where we've seen fourth and three third and three teams drop back and you're shotgun. like shotgun why are you guys in shotgun mm -hmm. why are you throwing the ball do you not have confidence in your run game can you run is your quarterback mobile and the answer is no, 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 they don't have confidence. The simple fact that the Baltimore Ravens have that option. They can drop back and pass if they want. But more importantly, they will run the ball on third and medium and get the first down. Lamar Jackson had almost 700 yards rushing, and he started in week 11. <laughs> <laughs> if he would play those season, he'd be the leading rusher in NFL. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Third on Thursday brings us to this. The Eagles up against the Bears on Sunday late afternoon. The Super Bowl MVP has something special going on, but he faces that ferocious Chicago defense at home. Who has the bigger impact on the game? Is it Magic Nick Foles or super talented Khalil Mack? I think it's Foles. Okay. Mack's a better player. The Eagles need him to do more. Khalil Mack can sit down and get double team, triple team the yeah. whole game, and the Bears defense can still completely wreck shop. He's had several games this season with no sacks, and they still win. Foles will have the bigger impact because he has to for the Eagles. Yeah, and this one is a quarterback versus a pass rusher. And I know we, we like to have arguments about Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack being yeah. the most important players to their teams. When it comes down to it in the playoffs, quarterbacks win these games. Who's going to have the bigger impact? It might be Nick Foles not showing up and throwing three interceptions and right. saying, okay, well, that was the That's impact he had. I'm going to say Nick Foles, and I would bet against him having three interceptions. Mm. Khalil Mack is the common thread through this whole game. The narrative yeah. from start to finish, sideline to sideline, from both teams' perspectives. Kyle just mentioned it. If Khalil Mack is in double and triple team all game, that means the guys around him have to step up. And we've seen that this year. If they don't, that means the guys around him for roles in the biggest game of the year. Sure. Now, on the flip side for the Philadelphia Eagles, if they're dedicating one, two, even three guys to Khalil Mack on each play, that means the play calling has to be ultra creative. Because how are you going to dedicate two or three guys to one individual and still have enough to mm. have a successful play? And on the flip side, just like I'm saying about the guys surrounding Khalil Mack, if you're dedicating two or three guys to Khalil Mack on each play for the Philadelphia Eagles, that means the other eight dudes on that field need to be supreme in their execution. So regardless of what happens on either side of the ball, Khalil Mack will be the common thread of every single play on the field. So he's the most important player. Twelve and a half sacks in 14 games. Comes up in big moments. Sacked Aaron Rodgers three and a half times wow. in a game. He's not easy to bring down or get your hands on. And the Bears lost. That's the only division game that they lost was week one against Aaron mm. Rodgers and company when Khalil Mack was not even part of the team. So that hand like, reaching out. Math, oh. math brings the fact yeah. that it was great. He he touchdown. Get some, yeah. His hands on much, Mr. Foles. Um, yeah. Finally, the Colts and the Texans will meet for the third time this season on Wild Card Week. And sorry, I'm Colts <laughs> doing this on camera. Let's we'll heat it up. Uh, sorry, heating up Come right now. now. Tell me who had the bigger impact on your childhood, guys. Indianapolis' is own Mark Summers or Houston native Patrick Swayze. What movie is that for Swayze? That looks great right yeah, there. Listen, Swayze's amazing. He's had some legendary films, you know, but it's Summers. You're summers. Going double, going summers. Really? double Dare. Listen, really? Double. Listen, when Double Dare and Gladiator had a baby, they birthed the Titan Games and American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> Without Double Dare, a lot of the stuff we enjoy right now wouldn't even be in place. Right. So I'm going Mark Summers and Double Dare. It's shaped my childhood. Summers is incredible. Everything about him was cool. Even as a kid, the fact that his name was Summer yeah, was, it was, cool. it was, it was in and of itself. Great season. Um, 
However, in 1989, uh, I, my father, who's a great dad, yeah. um, I had divorced parents, so sometimes the dad kind of overcompensates, <laughs> brought me to the River Tree Court Movie Theater what in Vernon it? Hills, Illinois, and we watched the film Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Yes. I was a 10-year-old boy, and why did that impact my childhood? Because it ended my childhood. Um, <laughs> there's scenes I'm learning about Kelly Lynch. I'm learning about ripping throats out. Um, there's a joke about a Buick that's not for a 10-year-old, and I left that theater a man. And so Patrick Swayze ushered me into it. I would also recommend anybody YouTube Patrick Swayze beer commercial. It is the best thing you've ever seen oh, way wait. back from the 70s disco era. It's majestic. I love it. Swayze for the win. Roadhouse, probably my favorite Swayze movie. I am a, a, a big fan of Youngblood, the hockey movie. Now people give talk me, about it. love it. You talk about great sports movies, Hoosiers. Youngblood was right up there with any of them. He plays an aspiring yeah. hockey player. Yeah. Patrick Swayze, the late Patrick Swayze. I would say the Chippendales bit with Chris Farley. One of the guys among the greatest Saturday Night Live great. bits of all Barney time. and Adrian. Barney and Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tremendous, tremendous presence. I'm going with Patrick Swayze. Mark Summers, I like you. I love Patrick Swayze. Should we see what Ian Rappaport thinks? Yeah. We'll yeah. Let's bring and him in at Sheet. Oh, both. Yeah. 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 We have to take a clay pot any me, I love that uh, pottery. Ian Rappaport, you got Swayze, you got Summers. Young Bud is an unbelievable movie, so high five to show you for that. Uh, I mean, just a complete classic from way deep in my childhood. But for me, uh, it was all about summers. Double Dare was, you know, probably yeah. my after my after school treat. Um, oh yeah. Just, yeah, you know, that was all me right there. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Eight. Let's get down to business here. Eight head coaching vacancies. I know you've been so busy all around the league, and that means it's not only the postseason, but also interview season. So let's start with the Jets. What is the latest?